I hated Chinese school growing up. We really didn't want to go. That shit was really difficult. And I had to wake up at like 9 a.m. 7 to 9 p.m. After an entire week of school, not fun. Not fun at all. A Chinese learning app would have been so much better growing up. I could learn Chinese whenever I wanted on my own time. My own time. That'd be way better. My Chinese is trash. I didn't want to teach her Chinese if my Chinese wasn't good enough. Hanata, nida fumu chong nali lada. Saturday Chinese School, a cornerstone of the Chinese American community for over a hundred years. A place where you're supposed to learn about culture and language along with other children your age. But how come it feels like whenever you bring it up to adults who went through it, no one has anything good to say? Is Chinese school actually effective for teaching young American kids? And what are some better alternatives? We explore in this video. All right, everybody, that brings us to the main part of this video. We're going to be going over five reasons why it is hard to learn Chinese in America and other Western countries but maybe you should still try. I mean, clearly this is a hot topic that is on people's minds. The last video we did with Nelson, we got Dave today, by the way, did a half million views and got something like 4,000 comments. Woo, it became a whole discussion forum in the comment no, section. No, it basically turned it into its own subreddit in the comment section of that video. With us today, we got special guest Dave Liu, who is Taiwanese American. Dave, uh, can you prove to the people that you're Taiwanese? <laughs> Both of my parents are uh, raised in Taiwan. I married a Taiwanese wife. I'm as Taiwanese American as I get. When you say something, when you ask something, is it shi bu shi or is it si bu si? Si bu si. Oh, hey Taiwanese! And by the way, everybody, this video is sponsored by Lingua Ace. It is the best app to teach your kid Chinese right now. It has one-on-one -on -one tutoring, so check it out on the link down below. Again, five reasons why it is hard to learn Chinese in America and other Western countries, but you should still try. Point number one, Chinese language learning schools in America for Chinese Americans have existed for over 120 years, but literally I have never heard a Chinese kid say they had fun going to Chinese school. Man, I can personally attest to that. After being in a classroom from Monday through Friday, the last thing you wanna do as a kid while all your friends are uh, you know, watching cartoons in their pajamas, are, is go to another classroom on Saturday morning to learn Chinese. Dave, you have a kid, you have a baby boy now who's almost one years old. How are you thinking about teaching them Chinese? Yeah, so right now, uh, my, my wife is fluent in Chinese, so she speaks to him, um, you know, uh, only in Chinese, and then I do a mix of Chinglish based on my fluency. Uh, but eventually, I want him to be able to be fluent better than me in Chinese, and, you know, put me to shame. And so, you know, we're, we're looking at apps, um, you know, immersive learning techniques to help them be able to, uh, you know, get it stuck in their head. Right now, he just knows Pai Pai So, and that's it. I don't think the old model of Chinese school works in 2022. And Andrew, I'll take it a step further. I don't think, arguably, it ever worked. Yeah, you're talking spicy right no, now. No, like, I don't think Chinese school ever worked wow. except for negative vibes wow. that I still carry with me unfortunately in my heart till this day David I think a lot of people are going to relate that they were traumatized in some part by Chinese school yeah, Cut, cuts man. deep and you know how the how oppressive the Chinese schools are I'm sorry guys you know for me my, I'm that, those are my words not your guys' words I'm using those words because I got held in that research and all the laoshers or laoses, they made me cry <laughs> all the time because they would keep me in that recess. And you know what the thinking is? They'll be like, they'll be like, yeah, 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 Dave, your level, even though you're like fourth grade, it's like first grader. So if you uh, don't get better, you're just going to get stuck there. That's your motivation. <laughs> That's your motivation, Dave. Ugh. I want to give Chinese schools some credit, though. You know, that took a lot of organization and took a lot of passion from people, even though, you know, I think there was a small fee to pay, of course, for schooling. But uh, they're trying to do a good job, but it, it doesn't work for a lot of kids. All right, point number two, why it's hard to learn Chinese in a Western country is that, to be honest, most kids around you, even if... They're Chinese ethnically. They don't feel a dire need to learn Chinese to live their lives. And you know, the interesting thing is, I think that in America, in a Western country, that is pretty logical. But that's even true for kids and are going up in a place like Singapore. Right. Where uh, obviously English is probably the lingua franca, like the main language, even though every ethnicity in Singapore, I believe, can also speak a home mm -hmm. language. Yeah. Even kids in Singapore are struggling with Mandarin and Singapore is in Asia. Yeah, and that's because Singapore is kind of a westernized country as far as language-wise, for sure. Used to be a sure. British colony, right? But that just provides a backdrop for if in Asia it's hard to really maintain strong Mandarin, how is it for us in America? 
Yeah, I mean, so I grew up in a town that was only in about 20% Asian. And so, you know, at school, I wasn't using Chinese by any means. Uh, we didn't have uh, Chinese offered uh, as a language in school. And then I went, I grew up in an all Chinese church as well. And then all my peers at Chinese, uh, at the church were, you know, speaking English. You know, we didn't want to speak Chinese unless we were speaking with our parents. And so there weren't really that many opportunities for me to use my Chinese growing up. I mean, I think that there are a lot of reasons why people should start to learn Mandarin. Uh, one, learning a language like that that is so complicated and difficult can actually do different things to your brain growing up. And that's why it's important for little kids um, like your son to be exposed to learning Mandarin now um, because it's going to actually change like, you know, how his brain nerves are connecting in the synapses it's and all Studies that. have shown that um, kids who know multiple languages have better creativity and more analytical thinking abilities. Point number three, why it's hard to learn Chinese in the West. It's because Chinese content globally, while it's getting better, and it definitely is better than when we were growing up. Oh my goodness, way better. It is still not super mainstream, and a lot of people who are not Chinese are not consuming it. Taiwanese did have content, right? It had some C dramas, it had some C pop. You guys were leading C pop at Vanessa the time. Wu, Meteor, yeah. Shower Garden. Uh, what's the girl? There's like some, there were some rappers a little bit here. Jolin Lin Sai. Oh, uh, MC Hot Dog. Oh, mm -hmm. you talking about Machi? Yeah. Machi yeah. and MC Ur Ur Urgo. Ruko. Yeah. Well, I time it. I time it. Uh, what, how'd you like the content growing up and how do you compare it to the content did, did now? It, did it help you learn Mandarin to, to have like Jay Tobin? I'll be honest though. I mean, uh, because I'm not a native speaker, um, Jay Chow tends to mumble a lot. And so even though I felt, you know, yeah, Jay Chow's first language was, is actually Taiyu to yeah. Taiwanese. Even language. though I felt a sense of pride just seeing him uh, succeed and I love the music, it was hard to really learn the lyrics and learn Chinese from it. Uh, to wrap up this point, Chinese content globally is getting better year by year, but to fully like embrace it and enjoy it, you will have to know some Mandarin and especially learning it at a young age, using apps such as Lingo Ace is really gonna help. Point number four on why it's hard to learn Chinese in the West is that, you know, you don't, you don't really get a lot of credit for trying to speak bad Chinese to people as opposed to if you are like a non-Chinese or non-Asian trying to speak Chinese people would find it a lot more impressive. You know, sometimes I, because they look at, when native speakers look at me, they, they think that I can speak fluently, but I'm just conversational or I have an accent. So um, I get very self-conscious. And so, you know, a conversation would start, it would go really smoothly, but then as soon as they introduce uh, really advanced vocabulary, I start getting lost and then have to apologize. Right? And so all these things. So it's just a very ABC dynamic. And it's funny for me, um, I've definitely met non-Asians who speak better Chinese than me, but even if my accent technically might be a little bit better because I still grew up around it and in that family, their like ability to speak and convey ideas is just way beyond. Right, so right, right. It, it happens, but uh, I just, do think sometimes people think, "Oh, oh that's a hunger." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I got that a lot because uh, because the well, yeah, not only <laughs> it's the eyes, but it's uh, Andrew's ability to speak Mandarin. It's a little bit like a Korean person's ability. Yeah, to speak Mandarin. that bugged me out the first time when I was like trying to speak, and then they're like, "Oh, Nisha, oh, oh, Nisha hunger," and, no, and I was like, "No, no. 不是, 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 我是中国人. and they're like, "Ah, 不是中国人. I was like, "Oh, uh, 对不起, 我是, uh, 华州华裔. and then they're like, "Oh, okay, okay." <laughs> to point out why you should still do it though. It's because one thing I've realized is that there's a lot of different levels of Chinese people. Yeah, back in the day, there were Chinese people who would judge you for having bad Chinese. But nowadays there are so many Chinese immigrants into places like America, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, whether that's the UK, even Singapore, that the people are just gonna appreciate it if you try. Especially Andrew, like we said, there's a lot of like maybe less educated immigrants. They don't speak English at all. So they're going to appreciate you trying a lot more. Even if they know that you are a Hua Chao Hua Yi that just happens to have like kind of a low level, they appreciate you attempting to communicate mm -hmm. with them because so many people at your level wouldn't even try. And point number five, um, as there are more second and third generation and fourth generation Chinese growing up in America, inevitably we will start to fall away from the motherland heritage. Um, but, so we have to do other things to stay closer to it. For sure, for sure. Dave, you have a point? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, my my parents' uh, Chinese is obviously perfect, um, and then mine is very broken slash conversational. So I can only think about my son, how his Chinese is going to be. Fortunately, I married a, uh, you know, a woman who's very fluent in Chinese, and so she helps with that. But, uh, you know, as the generations keep get deeper and deeper, we're going to need... Um, different ways to learn Chinese aside from uh, just our immediate family being fluent in Chinese. 
even though my Chinese is so horrible, even if I don't marry a Chinese woman, right, who can speak Chinese, given that there is going to be Chinese classes available to him throughout his school, probably at some point, and also that there's apps such as Lingo Ace that are really fun and easy to use, my kid's Chinese is actually going to be better than mine. Think about it. Growing up, in a way, it was harder for us to learn Mandarin if you wanted to be Americanized. But now in the future, with all the apps coming out, such as Lingo Ace and the opportunities and the content is getting better, literally a lot of our kids could very well speak way better Chinese than us. My wild dream is that when my son eventually makes the NBA, he'll be fluent enough to do interviews in Chinese to the Chinese reporters. Okay. Well, Dave is 6'2", by the way, so there, there, there's a chance. There's You're taller than Jeremy Lin's parents. Yo, Dave, your kid is too young, but we actually have coverage and footage of a family friend of ours who's not full Chinese, half Japanese, half Chinese, actually using Lingo Ace successfully and building that interest. Yeah, she, Hanata was able to use the app and then learn a lot of what she learned even at the restaurant. Yeah, I mean, like we said, Lingo Ace, the teachers are native Chinese speakers. They're incorporating the lessons with ancient Chinese culture, with modern Chinese culture. So really, they're hitting it from all angles. You know what I mean? To really give you this like immersive, cool, fun, engaging experience. Roll the coverage. <laughs> What's going on everybody? I'm here at 1 Fulton Square in Flushing, Queens. I'm here at the Nanshan getting some of their famous Shaolong Baos and I'm here with a friend of mine. Can you introduce yourself? Did you try the Lingo Ace app? Did you use that to learn Chinese? Yes, I did. Did you think it was fun? I think so. Okay, we're gonna go practice some Chinese right now. Is that okay? Yep. Uh, oh, who I would better? say it was about even. Yeah? It was about even. I call it a tie. <laughs> I think that Lingo Ace really is able to gamify it. And you know, the games are so good nowadays in 2022. Lingo Ace is like using modern technology too. You know, it's not just this old school teacher just yelling at you in a classroom until you cry. I mean, it could be fun. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. This video is sponsored by Lingo Ace. Like we said, there are a lot of reasons why learning Chinese is tough. There's also a lot of reasons why you should start to learn Mandarin. And there's actually a lot of ways to learn Mandarin. Mandarin now, Lingo Ace being the best app for children that's gonna be able to take them from the beginner level to the advanced level. For me personally, I kind of wish I had an app like Lingo Ace growing up that would have really helped me learn Mandarin because at the time, me being the youngest in the family, they were just trying to focus on me learning English and things were getting really busy around the house. And you know, had I had this app during the summertime or even during the school year, I think it would have helped a lot when I was younger. And here are six quick benefits on why you should think about the Lingo Ace app. Number one, you can use it at home. So no worries about pandemic scheduling or trying to find a Saturday Chinese school. Number two, it's actually one-on-one. -on -one. You get a personal Chinese tutor with each lesson. Number three, it's fun. It's not just like drilling memorization like it used to be back in Chinese school. It is making it fun. It's tying in a lot of Chinese history as well. Number four, you can use it on your computer and iPad. Number five, it prepares your kids for real life situations. And number six, if you are a parent yourself and you are not even that good at Mandarin, you can actually start to learn along with your child and you can actually still learn something. Again, because they make it really fun and easy and they tie in history and, and Chinese mythology as well. So it's really all encompassing. In the comments down below, let me know if you actually want to teach your future children Mandarin at all and how you would go about doing that. And let us know if the Lingo Ace app seems interesting. If you want more information, click on that link in the description box below. And until next time, we out. Peace.